about these super vivid watercolour paints from Viviva. They kindly asked me to try them out and the first thing I did was a sheet with all the colours on so that I could see what I was working with and wow they are so vibrant. Um, they're colours that are impregnated into paper and they're really designed so that you can travel around with them and they do come with a little pen that you fill with water but because I use quite a lot of water I've decided to use a brush. Each of these colours is separated with some paper, uh, some greaseproof type paper so the colours don't mix into each other and no, how handy is that to pop into your bag? Um, just you, know, you could fly, you could do all sorts of things with these really vibrant colours. Now what I am finding is I'm using just a tiny tiny bit of them and they are going such a long way and so I thought, you can't just test one picture. I'm going to paint six pictures in different ways on different paper and just you know, see how they work with all the different ways of doing it. First of all, I'm going to add some masking fluid. I'm using pink masking fluid. I'm using a Marilyn Ellis block. It's rough paper. And I'm just masking out all the areas that I want to keep absolutely white. And that way it has a really good contrast with the vibrant dyes when you add those. So just all the little areas, squint if you're not quite sure where they're lighter. Uh, that just makes it a little bit easier. Just using a bamboo pen to push it on. So, um, that also makes the vibrancy of it look much brighter because we've got the whites and the darks. And it all round works really, really well doing it like this. Now for some black permanent ink, I'm using a bamboo pen again and I'm just squinting now to look for all the really dark shapes that I can see. And I'm putting it on quite sort of roughly because I quite like the effect when I put the vibrant um, colours on that they run, it pulls out some of the black ink a little bit and it runs and it gives that sort of movement and a, and a softer look. But if you want it to be more precise, not a problem just leave it on overnight let the ink get really dry and then that shouldn't move or you can use an acrylic ink if you want to do it a little bit quicker just make sure that it's really really dry some clear water and already you can see my because I'm doing it quite quickly my ink's running a little bit and I'm happy with that so some chrome yellow again this is the third painting that I've done using you know, some of these very similar colors um, some of the yellow ochre too I'm amazed at how far they're going and they are just so vibrant it's just really fun doing this 
little bit of burnt sienna now. Um, that's just lovely and rich. Um, sort of natural colours. So nice big brush now and I'm wetting the background with just water, clear water and I'm going for some Viridian for the background and um, you can keep it quite pale or if like where I've got masking fluid you can go a little bit thicker and you can get it really vibrant and dark and I quite like the mixture sort of the lights and the darts uh, that works well. Just take out the masking fluid when it's really dry, use a mask away because it saves the fingers. It's coming off really nice, um, that's a good test for it. It's, yeah, it's, it's looking really nice underneath and it's kept those whites white. more green into the eyes, um, makes them look a little bit more real. And now some final inking on top and that's going on really nicely. The black permanent ink with the bamboo pen, um, just sort of squinting, seeing where the real darks are, adding a little bit of dark to the eyes and um, it's sort of tidying it up a little bit but I do love that looseness that we have so you don't want to be too precise um, but that I think is just working really really nicely um, you know, the, th the three pictures of animals that I've painted I'm impressed they work I think better than um, they've worked with other products Yet again, I am so pleased with these results. It's just a tiny little bit of dark speckles to go in just here. Just using the slate black. It's just awesome how far this goes. A little bit of tidying up here and there. Now what I 
have found is you can't seem to get out the pencil marks um, but that doesn't really matter because I think they can be quite endearing and uh, just bring that around there's a little bit of darker shape here but I don't want to lose that lovely looseness that we've got and let's get that dark shape in here Few sort of finishing edges, it seems to blend quite nicely. Um, what I'm going to do is a very watered down black, cheers, because that is in shadow. That's better, and that's in shadow too. So I needed to keep it white, but now we need that shadow to show up. So sort of, no, it's really easy and this is such fun and I so love these very vibrant colours. Okay, that's a little bit too dark, so a tiny, tiny bit, so just like you normally would. If you use very, very little because they are very strong. Again, that just sort of softens up there. Just squinting for anything else that might need to be dark, I think that needs to be darker here under the nose. Don't want it too dark. Because that is in shadow. And that's in a lot more shadow down there. Let's just grab a little bit more of that. You sort of work it like you normally would. It's a white band here. Yeah, I'm not going to do any more to that because it would be so easy to overwork that. And the more I use these, they are just brilliant. I am so, so amazed at these awesome colours. 